today. And the truth is, from a very young age, we begin to learn shapes. We begin to learn our triangles, our squares, all those kind of things. Well, guess whose idea shape was? It was God's idea. From the very beginning, God has put us together in a certain way to fit into certain places and certain things so that he could be glorified and we could be satisfied. Have you ever tried to put a square peg in a round hole? You got frustrated, didn't you? Yeah. And sometimes people, when they, when, they, when they wrestle with this concept of where do I fit, often get frustrated and just, just go off somewhere. But the truth is, God has a place for us. And today I want to talk about this. The word ministry is the, really the word that we're talking about. Now, ministry is a big word. It comes from the Greek word diakonos. Turn to your neighbor and say diakonos. Say one more time, diakonos. Now, if you did that today, yes, Lord, your servant is hearing, is listening, okay? If you said the word diakonos, you just said a Greek word. Let me teach you another Greek word, yaya. Turn to your neighbor and say yaya. Yaya is just Greek for grandma. Okay? Now, there's a lot of things that are packed into that word grandma, isn't there? There's a lot of things that we think of when we think of grandma. Well, when you say diakonos, there's a lot of things packed in there, but here's the most important thing you need to understand. In the Greek, diakonos is the word we use for ministry. And diakonos simply means to serve. Diakonos, to serve. So if you're going to be a servant, if you're going to serve other people, if you're going to be in ministry, the whole concept of ministry is about how others are being treated, being able to meet other people's needs. And here at Cornerstone, ministry is defined this way. Ministry is using whatever God has given me to serve him and the needs of others. Ministry is not about me. Ministry is all about you. It's about finding out what God loves and then doing it. It's about finding out what will help you and then doing it. Ministry. 1 Corinthians says there are many different kinds of service to God, but it is the same Lord we are serving. The Holy Spirit displays God's power through each of us as a means of helping the entire church. All of you together are the one body of Christ, and every one of you is a separate and necessary part. I want you to understand in that particular verse right there is a huge opportunity for us to realize that you do not have to be just like the person you're sitting next to. Somebody should say, thank God. You do not have to be just like the person when it comes to what God asks you to do, what God, where, where God wants you to go, how God wants you to operate in this church or even in the world. But in that verse is also the reality that you are a very necessary part. Would you turn to your neighbor right now and say, you are necessary? You are necessary. You are necessary. Okay, now I want you to take your finger, take your thumb. Everybody put your thumb up like this, can you? Put your thumb up like this and go like this. Tap your chest and now repeat after me. I am necessary. necessary. You got to understand this. This verse is telling us we are not an island by ourselves. We need each other. And so what we've got to understand is the purpose of ministry, the purpose of being a servant, the purpose of serving in ministry or being a minister is all about being a bodybuilder. It's all about being an encourager. It's being a blessing. It's being a part that adds to, not takes away. And so what we've got to realize is this body thing that the Bible talks about is is something that applies to us not just individually, but it applies to us corporately. Can you imagine lifting weights but never putting any more weights on? Some of you know what it's like to be in in the weight room in the gym, and you pump those weights and you pump those weights. Had a guy tell me just yesterday, I am now lifting more than my body weight. Now for some of you, you're like... 80 pounds, that's, that's not very much. But when you get to my weight, that could be a little bit more. 
But the point is, if we're not exercising, if we're not using our body parts to, to be better and to be healthier and to be encouraged, we're going to find ourselves getting weaker and weaker and weaker. And listen to me, children. This is important for you. Because as you grow, we grow. Adults, listen to me. As you grow, the little kids grow. And so we've got to realize we are all necessary parts of this, this whole dynamic of ministry. Everybody has a place. Now, how do you discover your ministry? First of all, Job said this in Job chapter 10, verse 8. He said, talking to God, your hands formed me and shaped me. Your hands formed me. What does that mean? That means that I was shaped for a purpose. Uh, you are not an accident. Listen, you are not an accident. Would you repeat that after me? I am not an accident. I am not an accident. Say it again. I am not an accident. Job said to God, you form me, you shape me, which means I am shaped for a purpose. It also says that I'm unique. I am not like you. You are not like me. And about the time you expect me to do just like you, we're going to have problems, aren't we? Yeah. It's the number one problem in marriage is we expect the other person to just conform to what we are when the truth is we are not to conform into each other's image. The Bible says we are conformed into his image. It's an amazing reality when we begin to understand that if you really want to get along with somebody else, the first thing you've got to do is understand they're not like you. And you're probably, how many of you ever had problems getting along with yourself? Yeah. Sometimes we don't understand ourselves because we don't understand that we're unique. We're always trying to be like somebody else. But the third thing is just as, is just as important here. You and I are wonderfully complex, Right? Listen to what David said in Psalm 39. He said, thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. It is amazing to think about your workmanship, and your workmanship is marvelous. You were there while I was being formed. You saw me before I was born and scheduled every day of my life before I began to breathe. Now listen, if God did all of that, who are we to argue with God and how he made us? It's kind of like a pot. It's kind of like this picture right here. If this picture were to say, you know, I'm tired of being a pitcher. I'm tired of holding these branches and, and, and this water in there. Can't I be a bowl? Well, whoever made this said, I want you to be a, a pitcher. And I want, I've shaped you. I've formed you. You're unique. There's no no other uh, vessel in this whole room that looks just like this. And if you'll be content understanding this is what I've created you to be, you will always be a complement to that bowl and you'll be a support to those twigs. I hope you get that picture because that's very important in discovering what God has in store for you. What ministry, stepping into the ministry that God has for you. We say in here at Cornerstone that function follows form. In other words, if you will understand your form, your function will become obvious. We have lots of ministries here. We have lots of different things that we have outlined here. One of the ministries that you see every Sunday is praise and worship. These are people who God has put in them. He's shaped them. He's, he's made them unique in that they can do certain things. When Eric plays his guitar, that's a talent that God has given him. When Thomas plays the drums or these boys play their horns, those are different talents that they have. Not everybody can do that. But I'll tell you what, when you sing and they do their part, we come together and it's a beautiful thing. We find ourselves fulfilling God's plan as we function as God has formed us. Now, I want to share with you five things that are very important in how God has shaped us. Job said, God, you shape me. Those shape, that shape stands for five different things. The first one is spiritual gifts. Basically, this is what we're saying in, in, in 1 Corinthians 7, 7. Each man has his own gift from God. One has this gift, another has that. In other words, asking yourself the question, what has God given me? 
Now we know that the gift of the Holy Spirit is something that Peter said in Acts chapter 2 was not only for them, but for their children and all of those, as many as the Lord our God would call. So if you're here today and you have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, with the evidence of the fruit of the Spirit, then you really need to ask yourself, are you carrying around a present that has yet to be unwrapped? Can you imagine, uh, Isabel, if I came and I brought you a present and it was all pretty, it had nice, pretty wrapping and the bow on top, and I gave you this present, but you never opened it? Wouldn't that be ridiculous? I mean, these kids, they get that. Hey, you give them a present, it's not about the bow. It's not about the paper. It's not even about the box. It's about what's inside. And listen, this first S, the the S in shape, stands for spiritual gifts. God has shaped us, and then he puts something in us. When he gives you the Holy Spirit with the evidence like matches the Bible, you got to realize God has given you something that means is intended to flow out of you. And there's a whole gamut of things that God puts in that box. And I want you to realize that God wants you to be shaped for his pleasure and for your fulfillment. So asking yourself, what am I gifted to do? The A stands for heart. This is where we deal with the things that we're passionate about, the things that get us going. You know, it was was funny because uh, my wife and I just last night, or two nights ago, we were sitting down and we were watching something on PBS about about, uh, eagles and ducks and all kinds of different things. And uh, we flipped the channel and here's a basketball game. And it was literally down to like the last minute, uh, maybe, maybe two minutes, but minute. And here were these two teams. Listen to me. We did not know anybody on that team. We did not even know the coaches. We didn't know the history. We just knew here was two teams. It was March Madness. This was a tournament. And as we sat there, both of us got sweaty palms. (laughs) It was a nip and tuck game. It was close. These guys were battling and they were excited and the fans were cheering and booing and all that stuff. The refs were trying to get every call right. And here's my wife and I in, in Idaho Falls. How many miles away, sitting on our couch, getting all excited because, well, what does that tell me? That tells me that when I come in contact with something that that I get excited about, that I like, my body's going to respond. Listen, God has given us each a heart. Revelation chapter 17, verse 17 says, God has put into their hearts to accomplish his purpose. I I want you to grasp that. In other words, there's some things that get your motor going and you got to realize God thought of that before you did. And God wants to use those passions to glorify him and accomplish his purpose. Listen, when you're, accomplishing your, when you're accomplishing God's purpose, not only will your heart be satisfied, not only will that gift box be open and you'll be enjoying what's inside, but God will be glorified and you will be satisfied. The next thing, the A in shape stands for abilities. This is where we look at some of the careers that people choose. This really defines our abilities. There's some people here who have real clear abilities in one particular area. Not only because they love it, their heart beats a little quicker when they do it, or they really love it and they, they, they would do it any time. I know one guy, matter of fact, he's here in this, in this church right now. He retired two or three times. And the next time I talk to him, he's got another job in the same career. What does that tell me? He's got some heart, doesn't he? He's got some passion for that career. He's got some abilities that he really finds fulfillment in doing that. And now most of us may not look at this job as a real great job, but this guy really enjoys plumbing. And y'all know who I'm talking about. But that's how you can tell when God has given somebody an ability, they enjoy doing it. And then you throw the heart, the love of that on top of it. Wow, this person does a great job. And I'm telling you here, he has done a great job around Cornerstone. We got a new bathroom that's coming in and it's in part to what God has put in his heart. He wants to serve. He wants to minister. And I'll tell you what, we need a lot of people like that who have a ministry for going into the uck and the gunk and the plugged up pipes of people's spiritual lives. Are you with me? The P stands for personality. And look at your neighbor real quick and tell him, you got one. You have got a personality. 
We all have been given a personality. And the truth is, 1 Corinthians 2.11 says, no one can really know what anyone else is thinking or what he is really like except that person himself. In other words, you understand yourself. Just last night, I was having some fun with my, my girls, and we were doing this temperament personality thing, and, and we kind of went through this thing and, and uh, got it all done, and we calculated it out, and we sat down with the sheet that helps us understand it. And it was so funny because as we went down, they would go, yep, 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 that's me, that's me, that's me, that's me. And they were constantly saying, I know myself. Well, God has given you that personality. God has given you something that may not be like anybody else, but it is a personality that he has put, given you, and it's part of the shape. It's part of what he has done to shape you so that you can find a place of ministry where he is honored, you're satisfied, and other people's needs are, comp- are met. You know, from a very early age, anybody ever seen this before? Everybody knows what that is? You ever seen one of those? They are great transporters of germs. But that's not why they were created, are they? That toy was made because at a very young age, children need to learn their shapes. Because if they're constantly trying to put a round circle in that square box, they're going to get frustrated, right? And have you ever watched a little kid, not the babies, but, but maybe the toddler who they know it's supposed to fit, but they can't get it to go? Have you ever, get, you ever seen them get so mad that they finally throw a fit? I'll move on to another toy. It happens. And I'm going to tell you this. You will find so much relief from stress and unnecessary frustration if you will take the time to say, God, how did you make me? What spiritual gift have you given me? What abilities have you put into my life? What personality? And then say, God, here it is. There's one more that I want to talk about, and that's experiences. And you need to understand, please repeat this after me. God never wastes experiences. experiences. Say it one more time with me. God never wastes experiences. Listen, part of your shape is the things that have shaped you in life. There are four things that can shape us in life. Number one, our spiritual experiences. Ask yourself, what spiritual experiences have I had? Today, we are going to be able to celebrate with Isabel as she takes on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in baptism. That is a spiritual experience. Some of you remember the day when you took on the name of Jesus Christ in baptism. And that becomes a landmark in our lives. That is part of God shaping you. It's part of God putting you together in such a way that you will be effective in ministry. The next one is what? What's the next one? Ooh. Everybody say ouch. Ouch. What do we do with our boo-boos? We put a band-aid on it, right? Now, adults, what do you do with your scars? Little makeup, right? A little bit more makeup. We get a tan. We wear a beard. We wear long sleeves. We we do things to cover up. Please listen to me today. If it is true that God never wastes an experience, then you got to realize, adults, listen, that not only the positive mountaintops are part of God's plan, but so are some of the valleys of the shadow of death. And if you can grasp this today, you will realize that God is working all things together for good to those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Listen, 1 Corinthians 1, 4 said, God helps us in our troubles, so we are able to help others who have all kinds of troubles using the same help that we ourselves have received from God. Why did you go through what you went through? And there's a lot of reasons. You may say, well, because I made bad choices, because somebody else made a bad choice, because of this, because of that. God wants to redeem every part of your life and allow you to be a minister that glorifies him, satisfies the longing of your soul, and allows you to be a blessing to other body, 
of the others in the body. The next one is educational. How many of you just got done with spring break? Yay! You're ready to go back to school. <laughs> and I love, parents are saying, yes, we're ready. <laughs> I love this part because, listen, you've got to realize being in school is not a waste of time. Come on, mom and dad. Amen. Being in school is not a waste of your life. You and I need to realize that not only is it going to help you in the long run of this life, but God is going to use those schools. He's going to use those teachers. He's going to use some of those friends to help you get a grip on how he has shaped you for ministry. So what have you learned? Listen to what Proverbs 4.13 says. Always remember what you have learned. Your education is your life. Guard it well. The last experience is our ministry experiences. Some of you have had ministry experiences and they've been really awesome. Some of you had ministry experiences and they've been really awful. And whether they're awesome or awful, you need to realize it's part of the package. It is very true that when you marry somebody, you don't just marry that person, you marry their family. And I couldn't pick a better service to talk to you parents about what you're putting in your kids' lives. Because your kid's future spouse will either thank you or have years of ministry trying to get over what they bring into your marriage. Now, with that in mind, listen to me. You are a part of shaping your children's lives. The CE department is part of shaping these children's lives. The ministry, ministries that are up here are just one little part, ultimately bringing us into a better place as we endeavor to honor God by serving others. Ministry demands us of us that moment where we say, God, I'm going to check out what you did. David said it, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Job said it, you shape me, you form me. Don't walk around. And I'm talking to adults here. Don't walk around in wonder all your life. Because you will serve somebody. You will, you will serve something. And I'm challenging you today to find the fulfillment. Amen. I got an amen out of that. You will find yourself in a position to serve. Be ready. Be able. Be willing. Listen, we believe that your ministry will be most effective and fulfilling when you are using your spiritual gifts and abilities in the area of your heart's desire in a way that best expresses your personality and your experience. Now, you found that on the outline, right? Everybody's found that? Okay, I want you to take that home. That's your homework for this week. I want you to think about that this week. And I want you to break that down as we've talked about this in a very short time frame. Consider the fact that God has been putting things into your life for years so that you could have an opportunity to experience the joy of what it means to serve. Success as a Christian is doing what God made me to do. Success as a Christian is doing what God made me to do. Men, God made you to be a man. Let's, let's eliminate the fuzziness here. Let's eliminate the questions, the concerns, the confusion. Men, God created you to not just be a man, but to be a Christian man. Women, God created you to be a woman. If he wanted you to be a man, he would have made you a man. If he messed up in that area, what else has he messed up in? Let me be real blunt here today and tell you that there are voices out there will, that will cause you to believe a lot of things about how you've been shaped. 
There are people out there who will tell you that you have absolutely no gifts when you've been filled with the Spirit. There are people out there who will tell you you have no place, that your experience doesn't matter. There are people out here who will tell you that what you're passionate about, whether it's video games, be with me, parents, stay with me, whether it's video games or whether it's talking on the phone or whether it's texting, all of those things that they're passionate about can be redeemed. Somebody say amen. amen. And you and I need to realize that in the midst of all of these voices, there is a voice that has to stand above the rest, and that is the voice of your Creator. Liberty, God made you to be a beautiful young lady. And by the grace of God, all of these children are going to find themselves growing up and becoming what God has for them. I'm praying they'll grow up and have a hunger to receive that gift of the Holy Spirit that looses all that God has for them. That they will discover that their heart, their passion is not something of the world, but it's something that God put in them, and he's got a place for it to be used. That they'll realize that their abilities are not to put themselves on a platform, it's to let God shine through them. That their personality is something that God thought of and God wants to use. That their experiences, whether it's spiritual or educational, whatever it might be, are all part of God's ultimate plan to serve him in ministry. So how do we become a minister? If you've got your Bibles, you can turn to Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. If you don't, you can just hang on here with the outline, and I'm going to walk through these eight verses and show you what the Bible says, how we prepare ourselves, how we step into our ministry. The very first verse of Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 8, and I'm reading from the English Standard Version, says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. The very first thing here is we've got to offer the body. Hey, if this pot right here, if this pitcher had legs... And I said, hey, come here, pitcher. I want to put some water in you. And the pitcher said, I don't do water. (laughs) And it had legs. It says, I want Kool-Aid. I want Mountain Dew. Goes with my green. And it had legs. If this pot had legs, it would run away, wouldn't it? Because I want to put water in it. Oh, I got a good, good analogy for that. There's some people God wants to fill with, with the Spirit, and because they have legs, they run away. God says, I want you to have a gift, and they run away. God says, I want you to fill you with my love, and they run away because they don't know how to be loved, and they don't know what love really is. God says, I want to give you a, a gift to be a, a, a generous person, and they say, I don't want to give anything away. It's all about me. The first thing the Bible says is we got to give our bodies. These legs were not meant to run away from God. They were meant to run before God. And at the end of this service, we're going to find ourselves a time to stand before God, to use those legs and say, God, here I am. Verse 2 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind and by the testing of you may discern that it is the, what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. You eliminate the competing distractions. Don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. In other words, I got to think differently. Like I just said, these feet weren't made to run away from God. These feet were made to run to God. So how am I using them? Where are these feet taking my body? And the truth is, we find ourselves with a lot of distractions. Some people like really shiny things, right? And so when something shines over here, they go, oh, I want to go here. And then they see something shiny over here, and they want to go here. It's like that dog that somebody says, squirrel? Squirrel? And they're always going after these distractions. The Bible says, don't be conformed to this world. Don't be running after a lot of different things. Eliminate those things. Set your eyes on who? Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. 
the one who knows us. So first of all, we dedicate our bodies. Then secondly, we eliminate the distractions. Listen to this. I think you'll enjoy it. If you burn the candle at both ends, you're not as bright as you think you are. (laughs) Amen? Amen. And if you're serious about serving God, if you're really serious about being where God wants you to be, Being a circle and finding that circle that you fit in. Being a square and finding that square, a triangle and finding that triangle. You're going to have to say no to some things. A circle cannot be a triangle unless it's reshaped. A square cannot be a circle unless it's reshaped. And what God does is he shapes us from the day we're born, conceived. He begins to work through us. And put us into a place where we can slip into a spot of ministry and be effective for him. Verse 3 says, For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned him. That verse basically says, look at your strengths. Don't think more of yourself than you are, but realize God has given you some strengths. You do plumbing really well. You did pipe work really well. You do sewing machines really well. That drain does a great job of letting me know when the water has hit that level. It's just doing what it was created to do. You can shut that off if you would. We'll be ready. Perfect. Evaluating your strengths means that you don't deny your strengths. It means you acknowledge your weaknesses and realize that you've got strengths that God wants to use. Number four, verses four and five of this verse say, just as each of us has every bo- has one body with many members and these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we who are many form one body and each member belongs to all the others. Step four of getting into my ministry, stepping into the ministry God has, is to cooperate with other believers. Notice what this verse said. Everyone is a part. And that means that every member has a ministry. That means that every member is important. Every individual here is an important part of this body. And we all need to cooperate together. Remember what I said at the beginning, ministry in the Bible is about honoring God and meeting people's needs. It's not about me, it's about cooperating. The last one here in verses 6 through 8 says this, Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. Number five, I activate my gifts. Use the gifts. I told you earlier that if I gave a present to Isabel or any of these young kids, they know what to do. Matter of fact, you have to hold them back from unwrapping that, right? If I gave a gift to Jake and he were to look at that gift and say, I don't know what to do. His mama would say, yes, you do. His question is, can I do it now? I want to challenge you to think about what God has given you. And how you're shaped. And how to activate the things that God has for you. It goes on to say, If prophecy in proportion to our faith. In service, if service in our serving. The one who teaches in his teaching. The one who exhorts in his exhortation. The one who contributes in generosity. The one who leads with zeal. The one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. Now, we have just touched on a very small thing. I've tried to be conscientious of some of the attention spans that are in this place today. I've tried to be conscientious of the time that we have. But I want you to realize that at every level, something will take, be taken out of this place. And for those of you who are just children, listen to me. You children need to understand that God is working in your lives right now. Right now. To prepare you for what's ahead. And right now, your past is maybe this long, but your future is huge. For you teenagers, your past may be a little bit longer, but your future is still pretty huge. And I want you to realize that nothing in your past has to be wasted, but your life can be redeemed 
in order that your future is brighter than your past. For those, those of you that are in your 20-somethings or your 30-somethings, you're kind of moving to that what we call middle age. And I know that's a long ways from 50, but the truth is you're still being shaped. You're not done yet. I've shared with a couple people here that I had a chance to visit with my dad. And my dad sends his greetings and says, hello, my mom as well. And as I sat with my dad, it began to be real obvious to me that at 74 years of age, his past was huge. And his future was getting smaller. Matter of fact, his future on earth is so small, he just talks about heaven. Remember when you were just a child, just a little baby, and you just had about that much past, and yet all this future? But listen to me, seniors. Don't check out. Your past is greater than your future on the earth. You have outlived the majority of your years on earth, but you're not done yet. You're not done yet. And don't underestimate the opportunity to say, God, here I am. Redeem my life, all of my past with all of its challenges and all of its education and all of its experiences and all my abilities and all of my past. Everything, I lay it before you and say, God, have your way in my life. You've shaped me for ministry and I don't want to be missing the opportunity. So at every stage of life, I hope you can see, God is still working. It took him a day to make the sun, the moon, and the stars. It took him just a day to create those things that we look at and are amazed at in creation. He's been working on you for six years, 16 years, 26 years, 49 years, 70 years. 80 years and he's not done yet today as we bring this to a close I want to challenge you we have only touched we've only skimmed over a few things if you would like more information on this and this idea of being shaped and being how to discover your ministry and discover where you can be at we have a class called Stepping Stone 301 and it would be a great opportunity for you to step into something that will allow you to understand some some dynamics of what we call shape and how God has shaped you to be a vessel of honor for him in these, in these days. As we close today, I want to take a moment and I want you to realize that it, it takes determination. It takes a willingness to put yourself out, a willingness to lead in order to be a part of these ministries.